three points. You also understand inflection points as well. Which you can give Number five. Number five is all about integration. I know that in some universes integrals are not taught. In this case, you have to, uh, to study them by your, uh, on your own. But again, nothing too complicated over here. Which means table integrals. Integration by parts and integration by substitution. And finally, some simplest calculus for the functions of two variables. which is basically covers partial derivatives and here we are talking about the partial derivatives of the first and the second order and again in places functions this is the functions chain rule so it doesn't seem too complicated, I guess. But again, we can create problems with all those very simple concepts, which are kind of messy to solve if you don't know all small tricks. So these are the things that you are supposed to know for the exams. We decided that this year we are not going to include differential equations again. So no differential equations. I think it might be ready for some of you. It could be ready for some others. Second thing. Now we can talk about things that you have to understand, which means we're not going to ask those questions directly at the exam, but these are the concepts that we are going to use during the studies over here in this program. and limits you have to understand at least the idea of the limit because later on in the course we will talk about the probability limits and for this idea you have to understand the idea of the limit you, uh, you probably will not be asked to find the limit of the function directly but understanding of what the limit is is something which is essential and plus all those epsilon delta notations of This is pretty much the core of the, uh, of the calculus and every serious calculus course starts with all those epsilon, epsilon focus, something like that. Uh, epsilon neighborhood we call it in English and uh, at least you have to understand what it means so that you, uh, you don't freak out when you see this notation on the board. Uh, it would be very nice if you still go over some basic differential equations. So that you understand what the differential equation is, what is the solution to the differential equations, and what are the different classes of differential equations. Again, something which is very basic, which is covered in the course of mathematics. Optimization with the parameters. What does it mean? For example, we have a function.
But here, uh, here, uh, here we have A as a parameter which changes. So first we find the optimal value of the function. But second we would like to find how the optimal value of, of the function changes if we change these parameters. This is so-called envelope theorem. Um, in Ukrainian this is theorem of Roganayuchu. And this is something that this is, would be very much desirable if you read about this beforehand. So if we have a quadratic function, depending upon the parameters, this could, be, it could look something like that, maybe something like that, maybe something like that. And then all those points are going to be on the line. And there are some properties which connect this uh, function for this line with all those uh, with those x one points. So, and this line is basically the function of a. So this is optimization with the parameters. This is in the uh, This is uh, this is what is required to understand pretty much from the very beginning in microeconomics. The second thing is a little bit about, uh, this is number four. Something about the set. First, what is open set? What is the closed set? What is bounded? What is compacted? Also, what is infimum? What is supremum? Sets, what does it mean that we have, have unions of sets, intersection of the sets, if we subtract the sets, if we have inclusion, and so forth. All those operations. And uh, so it should be some ideas about the theory of the sets because this is something that we will need for the probability theory. And finally, which is last but not least, uh, in econometrics, I think starting from the first and maybe the third semester, uh, there will be some operations with summation operators, some problems with summation operators. So if I have some point. the summation operator which looks something like that, and then some very simple properties. sum of, the, of, of all the elements, what happens if we sum over i, but we have the constant, what happens if we sum over constant, c is the constant, I guess this one would be quite easy, right? Still. Again, it sounds pretty simple, but for some reason in every year we have very bimodal distribution of students. Bimodal, that means we have two very distinct groups. The first group is the one for which this is extremely easy and they pretty much waste their time for the, uh, the, uh, the course. And the second, uh, second type of students is those for whom all this is very much high math. So I understand that if you have mathematical background, this should not be very difficult for you, and probably you are wasting your time. However, if your background was not mathematical, if you had only, uh, only one semester of mathematics, probably you might need to spend a little bit more time to, going, uh, to go over all those uh, problems and concepts. Okay, let's start from the beginning. 
beginning, we'll start with the derivative. And we understand the derivative first as the tangent line For economics, we treat derivative as the marginal change. Sometimes we call it marginal change, sometimes we call it incremental change. For example, this dash sign, this power sign, uh, is what I do for example. We have the cost function. So the cost function is how much does it cost to produce x units of production. And here we can immediately get the marginal cost. But when we are talking about the rate of change, we might have two different types of the rate of, rate of change in mind. The first type of the rate of change, rate of change, is so-called instantaneous. What does it mean instantaneous? How to translate this word? Mgnovenne. Instant, mgnovenne, moment. It's momentary. And this is nothing more than just a derivative. At some point, A0. Sometimes, when you have the function which depends on time, for example, this pair, then instantaneous change, which is x prime with respect to t, or which is dx over dt, sometimes this is denoted with just x dot. x dot depends on t, and this is equal to 2t. This is instantaneous change. Sometimes, especially in macroeconomics, we are talking about the proportional change. 